Turn with us over in the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. Uh, amen. So the guys make the coffee, right? According to the Bible, Hebrews. So uh, Hebrews in the fourth chapter. And so good to see everyone in good health and smiling and beautiful today. He says in verse number 12, he said, For the word of God, the means one, there's only one, is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's why when we come to a forum like this and the word of God is preached and it hits us where we're living because the word of God sees us all. Because he said in verse 13, he says, neither is there any creature that is not manifest, revealed in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession or our confession of faith. Verse 15 is what we're really about today here. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, or our weaknesses, or our temptations. But was, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. In other words, Jesus laid aside his glory in heaven. Remember when he was in the garden, he said, as he prayed to the Father, he said, I've, I've finished the work on earth, now restore unto me the glory which I had with you from the foundation of the world. He laid aside his glory as the Son of God and came down and took on flesh and walked through this world just like me and you walked through this world. And he proved that you can live without sin, else he couldn't judge us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today most of all for who you are and the power of this word. Father, the awesomeness of this word, God, your word, your executive order. That's what this word is, your executive order. And it stands above all other orders or all other words, your word, the word of God. Father, teach us today, Lord, uh, and Father, that we might teach others. Lord, that we can be more than conquerors, we can be victorious in this world. We love you today and forever in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The title of what we're talking about, I actually gave them two titles, a long one, and I'll give you the long one and then a little short one. I don't know which one they put on there, but the long version is success or failure is in the choice. Amen. Your success or your failure is in the choices that you make in your life, right? That's where it's at. He said in Philippians in the third chapter in verse one, he said, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but it's for your, it is it is for you, it is safe, amen. In other words, Paul is saying what I'm telling you is not grievous for me to tell you, it's for your safety. He said in verse two, he said, beware of dogs. Beware of dogs. What is dogs? Dogs is morally impure. He said, beware. There's some people, even in the church, even in the pulpits, that's morally impure. So you need to know the word to know the difference, amen. There's people in the world that is morally impure, so beware of them. He said beware of evil workers or evil teachers, amen. That'll teach you wrong. You gotta know the word to know the truth. That when somebody is teaching you, they're teaching you right. I tell you all the time, and I give you tons of scripture, but I also tell you to check me out, make sure I'm telling you the truth. Because one of these days, I'm not gonna be here, and I want you to be trained 
to know the truth and the truth will make you free. Hallelujah. And someone won't deceive you. He said, beware of concision. That means a cutting down. That means a mutilation or mutilating the word. That's what he's saying. Beware that someone comes along and, and mutilate the word of God. Right? I mean, if we think about it in this last day, you know, when I was a little boy coming up, I mean, the King James, I don't think I ever heard of. Because all these others that's come along, Johnny come lately, wasn't around. Maybe the NIV was back in the early 1900s it came about, but all these other things came about afterwards and you better, you better wake up and understand the difference. You gotta understand that the difference between the King James, and I know the King James is not the original, but I can't read Hebrew and Greek. It, but it's the closest thing to the, he, to the original, amen. It's a translation. The King James is a translation. All these others are an interpretation. There's a big difference, my friend. Amen. He said, beware of concision. There's over 64,000 words less in the NIV, the non-inspired version, than the King James. Did you know that? Over 64,000 words less. I done told you about going to buy a 10-pound bag of potatoes and you put it on the scale and it's only seven pounds and are you still gonna buy it? No, I think not. Yet, yet people will go buy a word, supposedly word of God, a Bible, that's got so much missing. I got a little thing back there, a little paper that says that you can memorize 17 scriptures in 10 minutes. How many would like to memorize, be able to memorize 17 scriptures in 10 minutes? But you gotta use the NIV because none of them are in there. Whole scriptures, that's just a few. But yet people cling on to it and preachers preach out of it. Paul told Timothy there in the third chapter of 2 Timothy, he said, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. I don't want nobody to leave anything out. I want it all, because all scripture is inspired by God, amen. amen. By inspiration of God and is profitable, amen. For doctrine, for reproof, amen. For correction and righteousness, amen. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. That's why a lot of people say you can't live perfect because they don't have all the word. I'm glad I know all the word, don't you? I'm glad I got it all. <laughs> Amen. Thank God. He's a wonderful God to us, isn't he? He said in Romans, Paul said in Romans 1, 16, he said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God. This is the power. This is God's executive order. You know, when the president of the United States signs an executive order, that becomes the law of the land. Did you know that? Until Congress or the, somebody sues it and gets it changed, but hey, right here, he's got the final word. I pray every night and I say, God, I think you got the final word. <laughs> hey, man, God's got the final word, all right? I'm glad of that, aren't you? He said, Hebrews 12, uh, 4 and 12, he said, for the word, the word, is only one, the word of God, is what? It's quick, it's live, it's a living word, man. That's why when you read a scripture and you get something out of it, you go back and you read it again, you get something else and you get a little deeper, it goes deep. That's why it's width and it's depth and it's height. It's a living word, hallelujah. It'll grow on you, man. It'll build your faith. It's quick, it's living, it's live, it's powerful, it's active. It is, it is uh, effectual. It's got feeling, this word does. It also means work. Uh, powerful means work. Uh, this word will work if we'll use it, amen? That's what he's talking about. Uh, he said the word of God is quick and powerful and it's sharper, sharper as by a single stroke. Uh, it has, it has de decisiveness to it, amen? That's why he said in Isaiah 55, 11, he said, my word uh, that goes out from me shall not, shall not return to me void, but shall accomplish uh, what I send it to do. The word will accomplish what it's set to do. It'll either save us or condemn us. The word of God is powerful, man. Ooh, it's a powerful word. Hmm, sharpening a two-edged sword, piercing even 
to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow and the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. In other words, it gets down, man, to where we're living. That's why when we read it, there's conviction falls. That's why when a preacher, some old redneck preacher can get up and preach this word of the living God and to convict a sinner into becoming a saint, amen. Shows us where we're living. That's powerful, man. Hallelujah. Man, it, it does things that an x-ray machine or an MRI cannot do. Gets into the fiber of a soul, man. Man hadn't developed anything he can look into the soul of man like the word of God can. It's powerful, man, powerful. He said, verse 15, for we have not a high priest, an example which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like same as we are, yet without sin. Remember when Jesus was here on this earth that it said in Luke's gospel in the fourth chapter, it said in Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost uh, returned from Jordan uh, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Why? To go out there and allow Satan to throw everything he's got in his bag, everything he had, throw everything you got at me. I'm gonna prove these people that you can walk without giving in to temptation. That you can walk victorious through this world, amen. He had to prove that you can walk without sin in this world, else he couldn't judge us, amen. He's not gonna judge you by David Whitfield. No, no, no. He's not gonna judge you by Steve Creel over here. He's gonna judge us by Jesus Christ, amen. So he says he would lead in the, by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those, in those days he did eat nothing. And when, he, and when they were ended, afterward, he afterward hungered. He was hungry. Amen. 40 days without food, he was hungry. In other words, in Isaiah the seventh chapter, verse 14, he says, therefore the Lord himself laid a foundation. He said, said, shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear his son and, and shall call his name Emmanuel. That means God with us. It says, butter and honey shall he eat. He won't be coming to eat an angel's food. He won't eat special food, but he'll eat beans and taters like me and you. Amen? He'll hurt just like me and you. He walks and breathes on this earth. He took on flesh. That's why he said in John 1, 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He walked. He was born of a woman just like I was and you was. And he walked and he grew just like me and you. Amen. The same way that me and you. It says that he may know to refuse evil and to choose good. In other words, he understands life, what life is. Amen. Just like us. Just like us. He didn't have anything special. Luke 2 and 52, it says, and Jesus what? Increased. He increased the same way we do. Increase your faith. Remember what the disciples said in Luke 17 chapter when he talked about forgiveness? <laughs> I mean, when it comes to casting out devils, oh, we got it. But when it comes to forgiveness, church people have a problem with it. Hello, now don't make me come out there. That's the only place they said, increase our faith. <laughs> he said, and Jesus increased in wisdom and knowledge and with, in favor with what? God and man. He increased with God. Luke 2 and 40 says, and the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom and grace of God was upon him. Because he grew. He increased. Amen? He increased. But then I hear some people will come along and say, Brother Whitfield, I hear you talking. I hear you preaching. But brother, you don't know the roads I've been on. You don't know the roads I've been on either. But I'm still here. Come on. You ever notice when people's, you know, down in sin and wallowing in, in the mully grubs and all down and out, they think they're the only ones that's ever been tempted. Huh? They'll say, because you have never, you know, done or been tempted like me, 
the same way or in a particular way of sin. You don't understand, Brother Whitfield, how hard it is to resist temptation. You ever hear people say that? Makes you want to feel sorry for them, do it? No, not at all. Amen? It's like some people say, well, you know, I, 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 I didn't have nobody to give nothing to me, you know, and so I don't have nothing. Brother, when I left home, I left with the clothes on my back. Mom and daddy didn't give them, put a big bank account on me. I had to work. Didn't y'all? Found out a long time ago, a hungry man will work. You let them get hungry, they'll work. He said in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, listen. There hath no temptation taken you but such is common to man. Next time somebody tells you, you just don't know the temptations I'm under. There's no temptation taking you that hadn't taken me. Come on now. The same thing. I had to pass every drug dealer. I had to pass every beer joint. Come on. I had to pass every whore on the corner, street corner. Amen. I had to do all those. I had to say no to all those same things, but I said no to them. Same temptation. There's no temptation, no temptation. He said no, he didn't say some, he said no temptation taking you but such is common, the same. Common means the same to all. But God is faithful who will not suffer you or allow you to be tempted above that you're able, but with the temptation also make a way to escape uh, that you may be able to bear it. And he does that to everybody. In other words, uh, he gives you two words. Either say yes to it or no to it. Amen. It's called a choice. He's given all of us a choice. A choice. The reason people are bound down in drugs and alcohol and all kind of problems and, and dead is because the choices they made in their life. Put on Facebook that Think about it, if you never resist arrest from an officer, you know, Jamie back there is an officer, you resist, you're in danger, aren't you, brother? You know, both of you, the officer and the person resisting. When you resist authority, man, you're opening yourself up to anything. I say, if you never resist, then you won't get shot. That's talking about people who resist. One guy put on there, what about that Brianna Taylor? You know, but where was she at? She was in the apartment with her boyfriend who was a suspected drug dealer. Hello, fugitive, done have been in trouble with the law, hanging out there. Man, you hang with dogs, you go get fleas. Come out from among them, be separate. I know I preach hard, but it's the truth. Young people, you hang with the wrong crowd. It's gonna rub off on you, young people. Don't sing too many. Don't done too many funerals. Well, it won't happen to me. Paul said, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, least by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. That means to be worthless or unapproved. In other words, like the teacher was tried to put in this dumb head right here when I was in the eighth grade, Miss Holloman, if I could get to her, she's probably dead now, but if I knew where she's at, if she's still alive, I'd go get on my hands and knees and apologize to her. This little hoodlum was in her class and, and she'd get up there and she'd teach in arithmetic. She wasn't even trying to teach manners and everything else. Yeah, I wasn't always this nice of a guy. <laughs> See, y'all thought I've always been nice. <laughs> no, I was a little hoodlum like some of y'all was. <laughs> but thank God for the blood of Jesus, amen. But she would sit there and and I know she wanted to wring our necks. Me and two more boys, I wanted to wring our necks. And she'd sit there and she'd say, you got to have self-control. This is the way she'd do it with her hands with the cloth. you got to have self-control and self-discipline and self-evaluation. And we'd look at one another. 
Isn't that awful? The Bible said confess your faults one to another. James 5th chapter. She was said, you got to have self-control. You got to have self-discipline. You got to have self-evaluation. Evaluate your life. Am I doing what's right? And if you don't have self-control and self-discipline and self-evaluation, Jamie will come get you and put you behind bars until you learn how to have it. Amen? Amen. Government don't want preachers and teachers of God in schools because, you know, separation, church and state, you know, that's not what the Constitution is even talking about. It's talking about the government shouldn't dictate to you how to worship. That's what it's talking about. But the same government school system that our tax dollars pays for built MacDougall prison up there and in the middle of the prison yard, I've been in it, there's a chapel in there and they call us preachers and say, would you come out here and preach to these prisoners? Wait a minute, that's state funded too. But they done messed their life up and we need somebody to help get them straight. Man, get, get them straight and keep them straight here. When it's a little sapling, it's easy to correct. Uh, not after it's become a big, big old pine tree out there that you can't budge. Are y'all with me? James, the fourth chapter. He says, from whence comes wars and fightings among you? All the problems people have. Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? You lust and have not, you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain because you make the wrong choices. You fight and war, you have not because you ask not, you ask, you receive not because you ask amiss. Not in the right place, not in Christ. That you may consume it upon your lust. Then he said, he calls them by name, you adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity or an enemy with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Then he said in verse seven, he says, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's what he said, right? That's what he said. See, people make the wrong choices. What is, what is, what is a choice, Brother Whitfield? Choice is an act of selecting or making a decision when faced with two or more possibilities. Okay, that's a choice. A decision is a conclusion or a resolution reached after consideration. In other words, Jesus said, count the cost. There's a cost to everything. Count the cost, right? If it's worth it. Right, that's what he's telling us. See, in every bad choice, remember he said, there's no temptation taking you but such as coming to man, but God is faithful who will not suffer you or allow you to be tempted to that above measure that you're able, but also with the temptation make a way escape. In other words, with every bad temptation comes your way, God is here with a good choice. Amen. He's standing there. See, he can't make us do because we're made free moral agents. If he made us serve him, he couldn't judge us, right? We didn't have a choice. But because he's made us free moral agency, we have a right to choose whatever we want. If we want to go to heaven or hell, our choice. If we want to choose right or wrong, our choice. But remember, at the end of this life, we'll be judged by our choices, right? That's what he's telling us. So he says, Every bad choice is presented to us. God is faithful to present us a way of escape. No. Amen. Look for the door. Jesus said, I am the door, right? I am the door. So he says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will what? Flee from you. Flee from you. Now, how do you resist? Well, how did God, uh, how did Jesus resist? What is there there in Luke, the fourth chapter? I read the scripture a while ago. He was all, he was all points tempted, you know. And there he's led by the Spirit into the wilderness, y'all know. And 40 days, and afterwards he's hungry. 
40 days he was hungry. And so the devil knew he was hungry. So what did he say? Take them stones and make them into bread. Jesus didn't say, I ain't hungry. Did he? Because the man was hungry. He didn't say, I'm not hungry. He didn't say, I want that. He said, it is written. He used that sword. See, a lot of people got the knives. NIV, the knife. I want a sword, baby. He used the sword. He used the quick and powerful and sharper. Amen? Than any word that came along. He used the word to conquer Satan. Right? He used the, what's the sword of the spirit? In Ephesians 6 chapter, the word of God. She weapon, man. So often people will take and try to defend the word. No, the word defends you, baby. Put it out front. Give people the word. That's your sword. Amen? Are you with me? Hold on. He said, resist the devil. How do you resist? By the word. You resist him with the word. What is resist? It means to stand against. It means to oppose. This word opposes sin. And when I quote this word, I stand in opposition to sin. It opposes temptation. And when I use the word, it opposes temptation. Are you with me? So he said, submit yourself therefore God, Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He don't like the word, man. Put the, tag him with the word. He can't stand the word. It'll put him on the run anytime. Amen? So Jesus didn't say when Satan said, turn the stones into bread. He didn't say, uh, nah, that's, I ain't hungry. Same way when you're not feeling good. And somebody said, you sick? You say, oh, no, I ain't sick. And you're about half dead. You just told a lie. Amen? You ain't got to say I'm sick. No. You quote the word, by his stripes I am healed. I don't care if you're having to hold on to something to stand up. By his stripes I'm healed. I'm standing on the word of God. The word of God said by his stripes I'm healed. And bless God, the word of God is true. And he said in Romans the third chapter, he said let God be true and every man a liar. Hallelujah. Joel Osteen's mom, y'all heard me say this a bunch of times. I mean, you come a long time, you get some reruns. That's all right. I watch them westerns over and over and over. Sister Cotty fussed me all the time. You done seen that thing a hundred times. I said, the beauty of getting old, you don't remember how it ended. You watch them again. Hey, hey, everything for the first time. Joel Osteen's mama, I heard his dad telling this story, John Osteen. He said he went to the doctor and the doctor said, you got cancer. You're going to die. Die with cancer. You're going to die. And he said, every time that that word or the devil would come around and say, cancer. He said he would say, she would say with her little weak bodied voice, by stripes, I'm healed. Amen. Quick and powerful and sharper. Whew. Power of God. Paul said, it's the power of God. It's his executive order. She's speaking his executive order. By his stripes, I'm healed. Cancer, by his stripes, I'm healed. Cancer, by his stripes, I'm healed. Yes. By his stripes I'm healed. By his stripes I am healed. She's still alive today. That was years ago. Why? Because the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. Man, don't quote how you feel. Quote what the word of God says you are. Amen. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. God, you're awesome. Verse 80 says, draw nigh to God. Uh oh, evidently when temptations start coming, you better check up. You might get a little close out of the way. A little ways from God, you know? 
He said, draw nigh to God. That's what he said right here. After seven, submit yourself. It must not be submitted enough. Hey, whenever temptations are just flooding you, flooding you, and everywhere you turn, you better get somewhere and pray. See, Satan, he's stupid, but he's smarter than no somebody in a black back sitting, slidden state. Are you with me? He said, draw out of God. It's like that piano. Watch this. God's the same place as he always is. That piano is the same place. But look what's happening. Come to me, piano. Come to me, piano. Come to me, piano. Come to me, piano. Isn't that amazing? Piano is the same place I was. I was the one away. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's not moving. He said, you need to come to me. Hallelujah. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. As I draw nigh to that piano, it's drawing nigh to me. Amen. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Woo, woo. Oh, people get upset if I call them sinners, but I didn't and God did. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. You want the world and you want God. You want world and want God. And the enemy sees that, man, and temptations come. Are you with me? 1 Peter 5 and 8, he says, be sober, be vigilant. That word uh, sober, I've got it wrote down here. It says, don't be influenced or intoxicated. In other words, by the world, right? Don't let the world influence your decisions or your choices. Be vigilant. That means stay awake, keep awake, uh, keep a watch, if you will. Uh, he said, because your adversary, you got an adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. Didn't say he was, he's as. He's a noise maker. That's all he is, a bag of wind. Walketh about seeking whom he may devour or drown. If you're part of that whom crowd, he'll get you. Verse nine, he says, whom resist steadfast in the faith. You resist in the faith, knowing that the same affliction, the same temptations are accomplished in your brothers that is in the world. Then people out there that are not in Christ, not how Christ, temptations get them every day. They're addicted and all the things that gets them down. But my friend, we can walk through this world victoriously, hallelujah, in Christ. What a difference. I can say no. Can't touch this. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. That boom, boom, boom you hear, his feet running away. Can't touch this. Boom, 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 boom. Are you with me? Proverbs 1 and 24. I gotta hurry just a little bit more. Listen. He said, because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But you have said it not all my counsel. People don't want a preacher to tell them. Huh? And would none of my reproof. Uh, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh, uh, your temptation cometh. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take and mock uh, when your fear cometh as a desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. Uh, when distrust, uh, distress, and anguish cometh upon you, uh, then, uh, then uh, I go to the trunk and try to get me out. Uh, but I ain't going to be there. That's what he's saying. Uh, they shall call on me, uh, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me, for they had hated knowledge uh, and did not choose uh, the fear of the Lord. Uh, they would none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Uh, therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. That's why he said in Galatians 6, 7, uh, he said, God, be not deceived. God is not mocked. To whatsoever a man sows or chooses, that's what he's going to reap. It's all in the choice. Young people, you choose your mate, choose wisely. You choose your friends, choose wisely. Old people, we ain't got none in here. Oh, Darlene went to the back. That's right. That's right. Choose your friends. Choose wisely. Hmm? Don't be partaker of another man's sin. Remember, 
John 666. It's a good place for it. John 666. And many of his disciples departed from him and walked with him no more. Huh? Jesus turned to the Peter and the disciples and said, y'all going to go too? I mean, if everybody else is going, y'all might as well go too. You going to go? Are you influenced by them? Peter spoke up and says, where shall we go? You hold the words of eternal life. Where, where else where can we go? And Jesus says something unique here. He said, you 12 have I chose, but one of you is a devil. You know what that tells me? That all those that left had been listening to Judas talk. Mm -hmm. and why else would it be stuck right there? Just out of the middle of nowhere, he said that. One of you, he didn't say was a devil. He said is a devil. Judas cast out devils at one time. Yeah, he was with the 12 there in Luke the ninth chapter. Power over unclean spirits, cast out devils. Right? But what happened? He got the influence of the world. Got him in the choices he began to make and he began to look at Jesus and, hey, he's giving that money to the poor. He's, he's spending that. Hey, look at that. It costs me art, but they rub it on him. We could get it and sell it and give it to the poor. Oh, he, he just greedy. That's all it was. Didn't respect the man of God. And he began to talk to others. And they departed from him and walked with him no more. Huh? Kind of sad, isn't it? Joel in 3 and 14, I know it's talking about the day of judgment here, but, but it's happening here on earth. Multitudes and multitudes in the valley of decision. People, people today will make all kinds of choices and decisions, and we will too. We need to consider the Lord in our choices and our decisions. Amen. Amen? The day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The judgment of God will be judged according to all of our decisions and our choices. First Kings, those come to the instruments. First Kings in the 18th chapter, verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long halt ye between two opinions or two choices? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. Look what they did. And the people answered him not a word. Voiceless church. Must be about like today, a voiceless church. Ben Carson said, he said it was quoted, it's from the Bible. He said, he didn't say that on news because you know they look, cut him off, he said the Bible. <laughs> he said, just heard him, he said, how do you say it? When good, good men remain silent, oh, Evil men prevail when good men remain silent. Evil in this world is on rampage. Why? Because the church is laryngitis. Don't have a voice. We need another John the Baptist voice crying in the wilderness. Amen. The book of Ruth, y'all know the story there. I don't go into all of it. I'll just tell you Ruth and Abimelech, you know, and had that faraway look in their eye. And they let, because of famine in Israel, they thought. And he looked over to Moab, you know, kind of waved at it, and Moab waved back, said, Come on over, come on over. And, and Naomi and Abimelech and their two sons, Chilion and Milion, went over there. The two sons married up to Moab wives. Oh, it's a shame. Oh, look what's happened to us over here in this land. Next thing you know, knock on the door, husband's dead. And then time passed, one son died, and then another son died, and here's Naomi over there with two Moab women. Choices she made. You know, a lot of church people say, look what God has got me in, this valley. <laughs> no, you made that choice. You made that bed, you got to sleep in it. But she came to herself and she said, I'm going to go back home. The daughter-in-laws started following her, come to the border of the country, the line. And Ophrah hugged her and kissed her and turned around and made the choice to go back to Moab. Naomi looked at Ruth and said, won't you go back with her? 
She said, I'm not going back. I'm making a different choice. Don't follow the world, people. Make your own choices. She said, and they lifted up their voices and wept again, and Ophrah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth claved unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law has gone back unto her people and to her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. And whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. And thy people shall be my people and thy God shall be my God. What a decision she made. She goes on back to Israel with Naomi. She meets up with old Boaz. Hallelujah, the kinsman redeemer, amen. And marries up and she has a son by the name and named him Obed. And Obed has a son named him Jesse. And Jesse had a son and named him David, king of Israel, amen. And Ruth is in the lineage in Matthew of Jesus Christ. Why? Because of a choice, a decision she made. The right decision. The right decision. Being led by the Spirit of God. Deuteronomy eleven twenty six. He says, "Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a choice, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God." But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which you have not known. Then he said in 30th chapter of Deuteronomy verse 15, he said, see, see it folks, see it right here. Right here in this forum right here. We need to make up our mind how are we going to live the rest of our life. He said, I have set before you thee this day life and good or death and evil. It's choice, all in the choice. It's all in the choice. And that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes, his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land where thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods, the gods of this world, and serve them. He said, I denounce or I declare unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whether thou passest over Jordan to possess it. Verse 19 in closing, I call heaven and earth to record this day. You know, every day in our life, our decisions and our choices are written down. You know, there's a recording angel that goes with us everywhere we go. And every choice and every decision and every action we do is written down, written down. Remember, remember White Throne Judgment? Remember? He said the books were open and another book, which is the Lamb Book of Life. The two books, one of them is the Bible right there. The other one is the book of your life. The day you're born, every action you took, the day you got saved, hopefully. <laughs> Amen. Well, the white throne judgment, you won't be saved there, so you never got saved. But he said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing with every temptation. God's got a way to say no. Be led by the Spirit of God. Amen? He said, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Then he said this, choose life. He gives us a hint. Choose life. That both thou and thy seed may live. Amen. Choices. Think about our choices. Count the cost. Don't jump into things so speedily. Don't jump in a relationship too speedily. Consider the end of that thing. Consider. Consider every choice, every decision, every action that we do. 
Because success or failure is in the choice. It's in the choice. Now we're here today and maybe, maybe you got a good track record of always making the right choices. That's wonderful. You need to thank God that you're led by the Spirit of God and He helps you. But maybe you're in here today and you're struggling and maybe there's temptations all around and you get confused sometimes which is right which is wrong. That's what, you know, that line that he's as a roaring lion, that's what a lion does. You know, it has no teeth. That, that, it's the devil. Jesus pulled him. Gum you to death. I'll beat his gums. A lion, he confuses his prey. He just stands and circling, roars. And all the prey say, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. That's what the church people and the people in the world, the devil is everywhere. No, he's in Washington, D.C. His demons are all out here, cohorts. But we, maybe you're here today and you're all confused. And there's maybe this week you've been pressured with some decisions. And I told this story before. I remember one time, it was the years before we got saved. Our children was little, very small toddlers. And I was at my cousin's house and we was playing cards and drinking. And he got up kind of on late 10, 11 o'clock and directly they drug out the marijuana. First time I've been tempted with that. They drug it out. They started smoking it and they offered me and I said, I said, no, I was scared of that stuff because I, I knew what it could do as a gateway drug. And I think I'm so thankful today that mom and dad put enough fear of the God in me that I didn't brother buddy because if I had a if I had a just took one puff ever what you do to them things I may not be here today I might be dead from overdose of drugs they kept on kept on for a while and directly his brother-in-law said well we got to go. We got to get in bed. I, I got to teach Sunday school in the morning. I was, I, I, it floored me. That's all over the land, friends. Maybe you've been, your friends, that peer pressure. Oh, you got to be hip. You got to get like the rest of us, man. Come on. Everybody's doing it. It's like tattoos. I mean, I, big, big companies now, they're, you know, like cruise lines and all that. I know I'm rambling, but hold on, listen. Very important. They're not coming out now saying that they're going to just open the door and let, you know, used to they'd cover it up, you know, but now they're going to just open it up and let, because it's part of society now. Everybody's all tattooed up. You know what a tattoo is? Let me tell you what it is. It's a desensitizing people for the mark of the beast. That's all it is. The Bible plainly says don't do it. Yet people, I don't care what the Bible says. I'm going to get me one. Get me a tramp stamp back here. You're meddling now, Brother Whitfield. That's my job. Get in your business. Make you mad. Provoke you. Amen? But I'm telling you the truth. Because one tattoo never stops there. It's always another one. It's like one cigarette ain't enough. You got to get 20. Come on, one beer ain't enough. You need six. Come on now, one drug ain't enough. You need more. Till suicide is mentioned. Don't tell me I've done funerals. Help us, Lord. Choices, 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 choices. Maybe, maybe the pressure's on you to be more like them. And you need strength today. And God is calling you. I want to help you. I don't want you to fall trap to all the traps of the enemy. I want to ask you to stand. And when you do, I want you to be brave enough to come and let God help you today would you do that you can be a champion for God and win them to God rather than winning you to the world
Are you ready? On three, here we go. One, two, three. Stand all over this room and come. Come on, obey the Lord. Lord, help me, God. Fortify me. Help me, God. Lord, I don't want any influence in this world. Lord, to cause me to miss out on heaven. God, I don't want the things of this world to influence me, God. I've got to be like you, Lord. Would you come? Come on, obey the Lord. Obey the Lord and come today.